Hello, welcome to Flower Juice. My name is John McDonald, and today we're going to look at making a really interesting spring arrangement using a variety of garden materials. So I've got some really beautiful tulips and this was really my inspiration for our design today. These are ones that I grew from bulbs from last autumn and uh, we're just going to add some nice garden foliage. I've got some lamb's ear, some mahonia, a little bit of dogwood, uh, some ivy, a little bit of iris, just some kind of a uh, nice mix of foliages to frame our design. And uh, I've also got a little bit of lilac and a few narcissus that we may pop in, I'm not quite sure. So today, the way that we're gonna make this is we're going to basically use this pot. Now this pot is a crock pot that got damaged, the handle was damaged, it was the type of thing that you were gonna throw in the bin. And I thought, no, I don't wanna do that. Now I've used this in videos in the past uh, where I've just used scrunched up chicken wire. Now the chicken wire is a really good traditional way of making an arrangement. It holds the stems really well. Uh, the only problem is it's a little bit inconsistent and your stems can get damaged on the actual chicken wire. So something we came up with, or well, we, we showed uh, last year was how to make a frame using like a grid wire. So if you want to click here and follow the link, you can see how to make that. And essentially, it's a tube within inside another tube, except it's been squared off. So this is using a plastic coated wire. The benefit of this is once you've made it, you can use it again and again. It's basically foam free and um, it gives you a nice consistent uh, set of holes for actually putting your flowers through. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our frame into our pot. Now, yes, it does get changed a little bit, um, but because it's wire, you can just bring it back to being the shape that you want it to be. So really you want whatever you're using as a mechanic to be wedged into your container. And the other thing as well is we need a good base of water. So fresh flowers um, prefer water. They prefer being in water. They're always going to be happier just in water. So let us start. So I'm going to do this here against the wall because I think you're going to see it better. Uh, so this is a little bit different than doing it on the tabletop. I do have a little bit of plum that I want to use. So I'll put that in. And this is the thing is with this wire frame, it's giving you two or three different places that will allow the stems to rest on. So they're going to be supported here, 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 and here, potentially, which is really, really good. So the first thing we'll put in is our greenery. And the iris, we can actually split it down a little bit. It's not something I would normally use uh, as a foliage, but as I say, I think it's an interesting leaf, and uh, obviously it's not the biggest leaf that was on there. I always think of foliage as being the material that creates a frame um, that you then sit your flowers within. And uh, this is going to give us that kind of garden feel, that kind of garden style. 
this, I don't know what this is. Um, it's in the garden. It's really, really cute. And it just has that little touch of a yellow flower on it, which is really sweet. With ivy, you can give it a little bit of a bend and you can manipulate it to go where you want it to be. So I really want that to kind of come over. And this is quite a good idea, is just laying out your uh, foliage so you can really see what you've got. I'm loving these dogwood stems as well and uh, you'll find if you use dogwood in your design it'll probably start to root and you'll be able to then replant that somewhere else in the garden. So what we're doing is we're creating not only our framework but we're giving it height, we're giving it width, we're giving it some line, we've got some heavier pieces and some lighter pieces in there. This kind of conifer, it's not the most beautiful but it gives a contrast in texture and it's kind of interesting. So I, think I don't really want to add loads and loads and loads of foliage and then find that it's just all getting too busy. So this is giving us a good base. So what we want to do now is look at our flowers. And really, I'm going to put them in in quite a random way. Looking for the long, longest ones that I have. Because you don't really want to take your long ones and uh, cut them short and then come to a point where you find that you don't have uh, the length left on the ones that you've got left to actually get you up. Up to where you want it to be. I just took that leaf off there because it's going to be too short. And yeah, I really, really like the leaves. I'm going to add a little bit more water just so that I know that everything is basically touching water. And that's the great thing about this container is it really does hold a good amount that's caused by a virus uh, in the tulip. Uh, nothing to worry about, but uh, it does then create these beautiful markings within the petal. So what I've been doing over the last couple of years is just buying tulip bulbs and adding them to the garden. So I've got one area that's more kind of yellows, one that's more uh, for pinks and whites and creams, um, and then another one that is more oranges and reds. But I actually really like bringing them all together, I think works really, really well. So I think if you're using one particular flower, so whether that's a rose or a tulip, if you want to bring lots of different colours in that together, that's not necessarily a problem. I'm going to take one or two through the back 
And the reason we do that is it takes your eye through the design. It brings a little bit of colour through the back. And that little bit of colour just it catches the eye. So you can take foliage through the back or flowers, it doesn't really matter, but it will give depth to your design. successful lilac. Um, I find it is very easy to wilt uh, and it really needs to be well conditioned before you use it and then just really keep an eye on it. Um, it's, it can be a little bit temperamental but it is beautiful. And because we've got a bit over here, we want a bit over there, uh, which is quite sweet. So generally you're going you're gonna to have materials going through a design, they're not necessarily just going to be in one bit. If they're just in one area, you kind of think, why? So like, if we've got... Uh, I don't know, say a piece of ivy here, you would have a piece of ivy there. As a rule, but not, not hard to last. I think the addition of the branches just makes a big difference. It's giving it a lot of height and catching a bit of space as well. But you can see that this uh, grid is working really, really well as a mechanic for holding our flowers. So, we do have another video that we did last year, you might want to have a little look. If you want to follow this link here, it's for a foam-free spring flower design. And in that video, what we did was we used just scrunched up wire, so the wire basically became the mechanic. So. If you watch that, you'll see that there is a slight difference with this having a very consistent pattern in the actual uh, wire frame. It becomes very easy to create your design. It's holding everything perfectly, but it's not having any issues really uh, for holding things uh, or positioning things. With the scrunched up wire, it's a, a much more freer pattern that's in that framework. So it works, uh, but it does uh, have a different way or a different feel to it when you're using that as a mechanic. So if you want to watch that video, then uh, please feel free. Uh, again, it just shows how easy it is to bring flowers into the home. Uh, and you can make a design with what you've got. Now I know this little daffodil is a little bit damaged, but just like with a kind of Dutch master painting, everything's not perfect. In nature, everything's not perfect. So let's just put it in and enjoy it. And uh, we'll not worry about it so much that we don't use it. 
I think these little narcissus are just so sweet. Again, he's a little bit damaged, but maybe I'll swap him or him. Now you can see this has gone together quite quickly, uh, and yet we've actually got a really big arrangement. So, let's have a little look. We've got tulips as our main flower. They're really big and showy. Uh, they're shown off to good effect, but we've got nice lines, we've got lots of colour, and the framework of the foliage that we've used has really uh, enhanced showing off these flowers. The fact that they're all in fresh water is really, really good. The only thing you need to do now is just make sure that uh, you maintain it. So maintaining it is going to be keeping an eye on the water level. You might want to do a water change. Also with tulips, you want to be careful where you actually place the design. If you place it with a very strong light source, like a window on one side, you will find that things will start to move around because they're a bit phototropic. So it's better being placed towards a window uh, rather than with a window to the side. If you put it in a darker area, then you'll find that actually they'll just sit quite happily and uh, not be a big issue. So, there we go. We've got our spring uh, tulip design, basically celebrating uh, these wonderful flowers and bringing them into the home. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Uh, we've got a new video every week and we'd love you to join us for our next design. If you've not already subscri subscribed, then click here to subscribe. If you tap the bell, you'll get a notification of our next video. If you've already subscribed, then thank you very much. We really do appreciate your support and uh, the community that we have. So let's all bring flowers into our lives and we hope to see you soon. So until then, take care and bye for now.